continuing with the embryology uh, we are now uh, studying about the embryology of the vitreous okay the vitreous has uh, about uh, according to the development the vitreous is divided into the primary vitreous secondary vitreous or the tertiary vitreous what is the primary or the primitive vitreous it is mesenchymal in origin the mesenchyme the vascular mesenchyme which are invaded between the lens uh, lens vesicle and the optic cup forms the primary vitreous it is mesenchymal in uh, origin and hence it is a vascular structure having the hyoid system of vessels the initial mesenchyme which comes here the initial vascular mesenchyme is responsible for the formation of the primary vitreous what is the secondary vitreous it is a definitive vitreous or the vitreous proper and this is secreted by the neuroectoderm of the optic cup the neuroectoderm which had come there forming the optic cup it secretes the secondary or the definite vitreous proper and this is an avascular structure when this vitreous fills the cavity the primitive vitreous with the hyaloid vessels is pushed interiorly and ultimately disappears okay the uh, vitreous proper is secreted from the neuroectoderm of uh, the neuroectoderm of the optic cup it is an avascular and this fills the whole cavity and the hyaloid vessel is pushed interiorly towards the lens and ultimately disappears what is tertiary vitreous the tertiary vitreous is developed from the neuroectoderm neuroectoderm of of ciliary origin where the ciliary body is there na from there the tertiary vitreous is formed and is represented by ciliary zonules the zonules which are attached which attach the lens to the ciliary body they are the actually a part of the tertiary vitreous so the vitreous so the primary vitreous or the primitive vitreous is mesenchymal in origin while the secondary or the definite vitreous or the tertiary vitreous is from the neuroectoderm the secondary vitreous is from the neuroectoderm of the optic cup and the tertiary vitreous is from the neuroectoderm in the ciliary region the tertiary vitreous is differentiates into the ciliary zonules and the secondary vitreous differentiates into the vitreous proper and what the primary vitreous uh, primary vitreous suddenly the uh, primary vitreous not suddenly uh, i'm sorry but the primary vitreous changes into the hyaloid system of vessels which disappear by birth so what are the derivatives of different uh, cells from the surface ectoderm all the all the outer structure of the in the orbit are formed like the lacrimal gland the conjunctiva the eyelid and also the lens the lens the optic vesicles forms from the surface ectoderm as a optic pic and then the vesicle and then the original lens structure arising from neuroectoderm are the neuro retina the retinal pigment epithelial cell the neuro retina from the interior layer of the optic cup the rp from the posterior layer of the optic cup the ciliary and the iris epithelium are also the, uh, the derivatives of the neuroectoderm part only of the optic cup the iris muscles are also derived from neuroectoderm remember this the iris muscles are not a part of a mesoderm they are a part of neuroectoderm the optic nerve proper and the vitreous it they are derived from the neuroectoderm what are the derivatives of a mesoderm the mesoderm uh, from the mesoderm Uh, the mesoderm and the neurocrest cells together are known as mesenchyme so if we are asked what are the derivatives of mesenchyme these both will be included and if we are uh, asked a part the the mesoderm uh, gives rise to extraocular muscles the vascular endothelial endothelium the schlem's canal any blood any blood the temporal sclera the temporal sclera the outer part of the sclera and what does the neural crest cells the neural crest cells give rise to they give rise to the corneal stroma corneal stroma which stroma the primary stroma and the primary stroma gives rise to the secondary stroma or the adult stroma and the primary stroma itself uh, itself changes into the corneal endothelium and uh, neural crest cells as they give rise to corneal endothelium that's why they also give rise to the trabecular meshwork because they are the very joining structures the ciliary body and the iris stroma the choroidal stroma and the sclera except the temporal part of the sclera so these all are the derivatives together these all are the derivatives of a mesenchyme okay so uh, we have discussed the uh, various uh, 
embryological how does uh, that particular structure differentiates and uh, change uh, and changes into the adult form now we see the timeline of the these changes so that we get the idea of what is happening at what stage and uh, if we give a outside form drug or some carcinogenic aging test given as delivered as a drug or some mutation or some radiation what structures can be affected in the eye or if there is a matlab if there is some uh, some injury at that particular uh, week of uh, embryological development what uh, what all will be affected okay so it is important to know at what time what is happening so at the third week the first time the optic groove appears the optic groove appears in the embryo at about third week that is the three laminar uh, three layered stage of the embryo the optic groove has already appeared at the fourth week what happens at the fourth week the optic pic which develops in the optic groove develops into the optic vesicle develops into the optic vesicle that is the optic pic from the neuroectoderm the brain part Uh, is <laughs> optic pic changes into the vesicle the lens plate is formed the uh, thickened surface ectoderm is known as the lens plate and then embryonic fissure develops between the and uh, develops and under what happens at the first month of embryological development the lens pic uh, is changed into the lens vesicle and the hyoid vessels develop and the hyoid vesicles develop at about 1 and 1/2 months that is 6 weeks there is a closure of the embryonic fissure and all that mesenchyme which has come in uh, is then differentiated into the primary vitreous there is differentiation of the rpe the outer part of the optic cup that is the outer part of the optic cup this part of the optic cup differentiate into rpe at about 6 week this part of the optic cup differentiates into rpe at 6 week there is proliferation of the neural retinal cells of the interior layer of the optic cup and the appearance of the eyelid fold when neural acquirement does occur at 6 week what happens at the 7th week at the 7th week there is a formation of the embryonic part of the nucleus of the lens and the primary lens fibers are then laid down up to the third month the sclera begins to form the scleral part begins to form and there is a migration of migration of neural crest cells in waves the first wave is when the first wave is there of the migration of the neural crest cells what is formed the corneal and the trabecular endothelium in the second wave there is a formation of corneal stroma and in the third wave there is a formation of iris stroma you have to remember this the neural crest cells the that is derived from the mesenchyme themselves when they migrate they migrate in waves they come in waves when the first wave comes cornea and the trabecular endothelium is laid down in the second wave formation of the corneal stroma occurs and in the third wave the iris stroma is also laid down by the neural crest cells so these all structures are derived from neural crest cells when the when it is derived at about 7th week when the waves come at about 7th week what happens at the third month of gestation at the third month of gestation we will start looking into the uh, into the retina where there is a differentiation of the precursors of the rods and cones differentiation of the precursor of rods and cones is there and the other cells like the mental cell layer and the marginal cell layer is formed the interior chamber appears where does the interior chamber appear into the cornea in the space between the cornea and the lens and the fetal nucleus starts to develop and the fetal nucleus starts to develop the sclera condenses the sclera condenses and the eyelid folds lengthen and then fuse that is the lid lengthen and fuse okay what happens at the fourth month of gestation the formation of the retinal vasculature begins in the eye the hyoid vessels which are which were derived from the which are the part of the primary vitreous that is the derived from the vascular mesenchyme which had come in from the embryonic fissure begins to regress begins to regress in, interiorly towards the lens and there is a formation of the 
physiological optic disc cup and lamina cribrosa okay there is also formation of the optic disc cup at the fourth month of gestation and the lamina cribrosa behind the canal of schleim appears around the uh, in in the trabecular meshwork right around the cornea the bowman's membrane that is a false basement membrane that is the thickening of the interior stromal part uh, develops at the fourth month bowman's membrane is a part of the cornea okay the, there is a formation of the major arterial cir uh, circle and the sphincter muscles of the iris also happens at this timeline what happens at the fifth month the at the third month uh, there was a differentiation of precursors into the rods and the cones and at the fifth month the photoreceptors now differentiate into rods and cones and various types of cones and various types of uh, sorry rods and various types of cones the cones which are differentiate them into red green and blue okay red blue and blue cones and the eyelid separation the folds which had been formed and fused together now separation begins the horizontal fissures start we begin to see the horizontal fissure what happens at the 6 month of gestation there is a differentiation of the dilator pupillae muscles okay the nasolacrimal duct the duct between the uh, conjunctiva and the nose the duct system starts to become peaking and the cones differentiate and the cones differentiate here just the photoreceptors were differentiating now the cones are very diff and now the cones are differentiating just after the mid term that is about 5 uh, to 6 months macula are first developed macula first develops as a localized increase of superimposed nuclei in a ganglion cell layer later to the optic disc macula at the first point of development how does it look it appears as a localized increase of superimposed nuclei many many cells are superimposed in the ganglion cell layer lateral to the optic disc in the macular area what happens at the 7th month at the 5th month photoreceptors appeared at the 6th month it, it differentiated into the cones at the 7th month rods also differentiated from the photoreceptor so cones appear earlier than rods remember this cones come earlier than rod although they are more differentiated it appears that they are more differentiated but actually rods are a more differentiated cell structure it took 2 months for rod, rods to develop and it took just 1 month for the cones to develop okay rods are more differentiated than the cones and they differentiate later on than the cones remember this this is an important point and we can see the application of this in the color vision but it is beyond the scope beyond the scope of uh, uh, mbbs classes and the, the, there is a myelination of the optic nerve begins at the 7th month there is a posterior movement of the interior chamber angle earlier there is just was just a space was formed between the cornea and the lens now there is a posterior movement of the interior chamber angle and hence the interior chamber deepens the retinal vessels start reaching the nasal periphery that is they start reaching the ora at the 7th month nasally okay the macula there is a peripheral displacement of these ganglion cells which were crowded at the macula there is it now starts to displace peripherally leaving the central shallow depression the fovea centralis so the macula forms after mid term but the fovea appears at 7th month okay the inner segment of the foveal cones decrease in width the inner segment of the foveal cones decrease in width but the outer segments are elongated okay the inner segments patle ho jate hain and the outer segments they become thicker and elongate and hence form the henle's layer henle's layer okay the lid separate after the 7th month of intrauterine life the separation of the lid is completed at the 7th month of intrauterine life what happens at the 8th month there is a completion of interior chamber angle formation and the hyoid vessels disappear at the 9th month what happens their retinal vessels reach the temporal periphery the temporal ora and the pupillary membrane disappears what happens after birth the macular region of the retina develops further so this is the end of the chapter of embryology so please read your books
please read your books i will uh, repeat okay